In one of my previous videos, I was talking about how I would win the Pirate Software Game Jam while I was only halfway into it. Now that it's finally over with more than 1700 entries, let's have a look at how my second week went. The theme for the Game Jam was You Are The Weapon. The game has to be playable in a web browser, so this means if I plan on making a 3D game, because that's all I know for now, I need to make all the polygons count. The hardest part for me about this Game Jam was getting used to Unity and coding everything. I've never done it on my own. I did a few small courses online. Once I got the hang of Unreal Engine, I stopped paying attention to Unity, thinking it was too much trouble manually coding all the lines compared to the visually interesting option that is blueprints in Unreal. But the pirate software game jam is only accepting games that run on a browser, and Unreal thinks they're too good for the mere browser games. So after looking at all my options, I went with Unity, since I already knew the interface and a little bit of C Sharp. Now that I finished the game, I got to say that pushing myself to learn more C Sharp and Unity was such a good idea. I feel very confident right now about my knowledge that I think I'll be using it for pretty much all of my upcoming prototypes and game jams. The prefabs and the serialized fields makes my life so much easier and having the game easily accessible in a browser is a must for playtesting and having as many people as possible to try your game. My main idea for the game evolved a lot during the second week. I was seeing the days go by and how little time I had left to do everything that I wanted. At first I didn't have a story yet. All I knew is that I wanted to make a game about a torpedo going through caves and finding treasures. After modeling and playing a bit of the game, I thought it would be nice if the game was about a torpedo looking for his partner, the left side torpedo, which was launched and gone for good. It was my first time creating a small story for my game instead of just simple gameplay, and I really enjoyed the freedom of creating whatever feels good in my mind. I had the idea of the story after making the main menu scene, which is the submarine wrecked deep down in the sea. I thought it would be nice to make it resurrect once you start the game and go look for his left side torpedo. I already had the gameplay pretty much done by then, it's simple but effective. At first I wanted to have the levels ending with a choice, sort of like Hades, and be somewhat of a roguelike with power-ups that you accumulate throughout the playthrough. But this was too much for me. C-sharp scripting was taking all my time since I wasn't used to it. But I made a simple gameplay where once you get to the level, the torpedo waits for you to click the mouse button to launch. You have to maintain the left mouse button to accelerate while evading the obstacles and not touching the walls. Otherwise, you get destroyed and respawn at the beginning of the level. The acceleration has a momentum that feels like it's underwater. It won't stop right away when you stop holding down the left mouse button. I added a scope view for looking at the level before launching the torpedo, but I didn't have time to make the feature useful. The plan was to see a bit of the level and where the treasure was before launching, because when you control the torpedo, you can't see what's ahead of you, so the scope will help you plan before launching. But time was of the essence, so I scrapped that idea. Now I had to make a goal for the player to for. Why play the game? Well, you have to find the left torpedo. But where is it? And how do you reach it? Before the game jam started, I realized that to make an efficient 3D web browser game, it's best to make the animations in a script instead of using the animator system in Unity. This was a huge challenge for me because I was used to keyframes instead of lines of code. So this is how I came up with the end goal for the game. When you start the game, you press the new run button and it starts the animation. Remember, this is all code and I'm not used to writing all those lines. The submarine resurrects and he goes right away to the last level of the game, where the left side torpedo is locked in behind the door. The right side torpedo gets out, sees this, goes back in, and the submarine goes to the first level. Four keys outliner appears in the UI to show you that you need all four of them to unlock the door to finish the game. So with only models and animations, I was able to tell the story and the end goal to the player. I didn't have as much time as I thought I would have in the last week of the game jam, so I had to focus on the main things to have a minimal viable product. The models had no textures and they were not AAA materials, but they will do the job for now. You have to remember that it's a prototype and you can only do so much in two weeks. At this point, I also had a main menu in a pause menu, which I'm not sure it was time well spent to do before other stuff, but it was definitely a good thing to learn. Talking about potential time wasted, doing an idle animation for the submarine shouldn't have been made a priority before other stuff. I find it hard to take a step back while working on the game to see if what I'm doing is necessary right now. I was doing animations for the helix on the back of the submarine and torpedo, which I think adds a nice touch to the game, so while I was doing this, I also did the idle animation for the submarine, but this could have waited if I had extra time at the end. 
end. I had a basic tunnel with colliders and a few obstacle models to test everything out. I ended up not having extra time to make more complex stuff, so I did what I could with what I already had. I was still missing sound effects and transitions between the levels. For the transition, I added the key model at the end of each level. Once you get to the key, it gets added to the key outliner in the UI and the torpedo spawns back to the submarine and it starts the animation to the next level. Adding the sound effects was hard. I didn't code my scripts while thinking about the sound effects, so I had a hard time implementing them. I didn't have time to refactor my code, so I just dealt with it. To finish the game jam on a nice note, I made an ending animation where you sink back down to the main menu scene with your left torpedo with you. This is probably the proudest moment I had for the whole game jam. Even if I did a game design document and tried to stick with it, I did not expect my game to be like this at the end. I'm happy that I familiarized myself with Unity and made it through. Now I know that I'll need to practice more on programming patterns and time management. You know what's a good way to manage your time? Liking this video and subscribing to my channel. This way you'll get notified when I release a video and you won't waste your time. I'll have a link to the game in the description if you want to give it a try. Thanks for watching. See ya.